Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, we're discussing the Patek Philippe 5320G-001 Automatic Perpetual Calendar in White Gold. You can see this 40mm 2017 novelty and purchase it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and actually complete pricing details for this Patek Philippe 5320G white gold perpetual calendar. So many threads of Patek Philippe history converge in this watch. The aesthetic alternately could be compared to the dial of one of the two reference 1591 center seconds perpetual calendars from the 40s. There is a 1463 chronograph with a radium dial in black that resembles this one with the same syringe hand layout. You could say a first series 2438 or 2497 also parallels the dial treatment of this one. Of course, folks are calling out the 2405 case and lug profile as a similarity or perhaps the most direct inspiration of the shape of this one. But all that really matters is that once you put all of those threads of historical inspiration together, you get a timepiece that stands firmly on its own four lugs. It's derivative of nothing and basks in no reflected glory, being better built and finished than any of its historic forebears. Now let's talk about how it fits and then get into the details again. 40 millimeters across the round of the case. The case is fairly thick for a Patek Philippe dress watch. I'm going to say that at 11.3 millimeters, it's not quite as svelte as one of the caliber 240 micro rotor references, but look at the profile of the case and the bezel and you'll realize that though a little bit thicker, it's easy for any kind of tight sleeve to ramp up over the side of that generously sloped tumble home flank. From lug to lug, the watch is quite manageable as if you measure it across the wrist, it's a sizable for Patek, but not overwhelming 48 millimeters. I believe you could wear this watch on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters in circumference. Bigger would be no problem. It has plenty of personality to hold its own against a truly massive arm. Just know, 13 and a half, you're gonna have no trouble wearing this watch. 14 and up, it's gonna be easy. Child's play, in fact. This is a very comfortable watch with a generously downturned set of lugs that really do appear to taper off, melt off the edges of the wrist rather than flaring out stridently. The timepiece does has, have heft to it. One of the consequences of the thickness is that there is a large amount of white gold in the case. It's actually gray gold, as since 2006, Patek Philippe has used the more modern white gold alloy known as gray gold. Still 18 carats, still white, aesthetically the same. The only difference is it's homogenous all the way through. If you scratch it or scuff it, there's just more white metal underneath, so you never see a milky yellow substrate as you would have on historic gray gold, or white gold, I should say. Gray gold giving you a homogenous white profile that never needs to be replated with rhodium. The strap is a simple gloss, medium brown, rectangular scale alligator leather, large rectangular scale, I should add. Patek uses the best. Folded edges, monotone stitch, calfskin underlay. Of course, you'll note the pull tab spring bars that Patek uses in the modern era, allowing you to simply pull the tabs with your fingernail and remove the straps for closer cleaning. Or if you want to swap straps, it makes it that much easier with no hazard to the lugs. There is a full gray gold clasp that nicely counterweights the watch. You can see fully finished inside and out with a gorgeous Calatrava cross buckle in a filigree style that's wonderfully hollowed out and skeletonized. Now, I mentioned that this one's hefty. That's important because if you like to wear your watch loose, because this watch does have a bit more mass about the head, the watch head, if you want to wear it loose, you need something with some weight on the bottom to counterweight it. Think of a dive watch or a heavy sports watch on a bracelet. It helps to counterweight. So this watch isn't going to want to move around or porpoise if you wear it loose. That's the advantage in addition to security against droppage of having a weighty deploying clasp on a watch mounted atop a strap. The case is simple. Well, per perhaps it's simple as the eye reads it. It's complex to describe in detail. Let's just say it's a combination of curves and sharp creases, of facets and arcs that are beautifully composed. Yes, the inspiration might be the old reference 2405, but if you look at that one next to this one, you can see that this watch is that watch turned to 11 and finished to a higher standard. The lugs in particular, with their splayed triple Gaudron Art Deco creases it's it's almost too beautiful for what is effectively a mid-level Patek Philippe complication because it makes 
three-figure Patek watches look bad by comparison. That's how beautiful this watch is. And that's before we even get to the dial. Now note in the transition from that florid case design to dial, there is a dramatically boxed sapphire. It has a bit of a kick and then a curve. So it's a 3D sapphire which is expensive to make, but also deliberately calculated to give the watch the look of a vintage plexi such as you might have seen over those 1940 and rare as hen's teeth reference 1591s. So you've got the plexi look with sapphire scratch resistance. Now we move into the dial and I'm gonna let you know that you should continue watching towards the end of the video. Keep, stay with us because this is one of the rare cases where I have a Patek Philippe dress watch that deserves its own loom shot and this one's gonna get it. You can see blackened Arabic numerals with outboard dot indices and syringe hands also with a blackened coloration. The blackened white gold allows for real contrast and pop against what's best described as a sort of custard, cream, or eggshell gloss lacquer base that is wonderfully rich and reflective, almost appearing to be wet. You feel as though you could plunge a finger into it like it's a can of open paint. It is gorgeous. The combination of colors work well too with the blackened indices, hands, the black calibrations across the dial, the small shock of red atop the blue of the crescent style moon phase, and an aperture calendar that is wonderfully true to history. Again, think 2438, think 2497. It's that kind of aesthetic. This is a watch that is easy to read at a glance and beautifully stacks all of its action along a central axis from 12 to 6. You have 12 o'clock, day, the date, the corporate marquee, the cannon pinion and the three hands, the radial date, the moon phase, and then flanking on both sides, a leap year cycle indicator and a danger zone indicator. So when you see it's dark, don't attempt to set the watch. It's in the danger zone when it's involved in its own automatic turnover of the calendar. Now, of course, the adjustments are done through push adjusters on the flank of the case. Don't use them when this is dark. That's the danger zone. Turning the watch over, you can see this is an unusual application of the central rotor automatic calendar. 324. Now the one we're looking at here is caliber 324SQ, center seconds with the perpetual calendar. You can see linear Cote de Genève across the bridge is perfectly aligned, circular Cote de Genève on the winding mass with a micro and spiraled overlapping perlage pattern at center around the ceramic rotor bearings. It's a unidirectional winder for efficiency. The ceramic rotor bearings compound that efficiency. 35 to 45 hour power reserve, depending on where the calendar is as the reserve is running down. If it's midday, the watch is probably gonna run for a full 45 hours. If the calendar's trying to turn itself over, 35 hours of power reserve might be all it can muster. Beats away at four hertz or 28,800 vibrations per hour. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer here. So it's a modern beat rate, but it has a Gyromax free sprung balance, which is old hat at Patek Philippe. It's a system they invented in the early 1950s, late 1940s to allow more precise regulation and shock resistance. But then it has a modern innovation, the Spiromax silicon hairspring for robust anti-magnetism. Now the watch does come with an accessory case back. So you have this case back, which is the display, but Patek realizes that giving someone a hollowed out sapphire case back shorts them a few hundred dollars worth of gold compared to a a solid case back. So as a matter of integrity to not short you the gold, they give you the case back with a solid white gold backing and no display port so that you have both and it becomes a matter of your choice which one you fit to the watch. I mentioned this watch is hefty. Well, fit the other case back and it becomes more so. Now the movement does feature a modern architecture. It's the only case of this particular perpetual calendar module being used with this particular base movement. Now the 5496 does have a central rotor automatic attached to it, but it also has a completely different perpetual calendar module. So this watch mechanically is a little bit of a standalone and unique by that virtue within the Patek Philippe catalog. 29 joules extraordinarily adjusted in six positions, which is better than most chronometers. So it's not just beautifully finished with mirrored englage on the edge of every bridge and black polish polished details, which you can see to good advantage. As I turn the watch flush to the camera, everything that is black polished goes black, goes jet black as I turn it past its reflecting angle. And you can also see the gleam on the edge of the bridges as well as the jewel sinks that are mirror finished. True englage, not a sawed off machined angle as you'll see on many movements of lower stature. Handsome, technically proficient, a bit of a unique entry in the modern Patek Philippe perpetual calendar and complication catalog. This watch wins by its charisma and it brings the horological credentials to match. See it and own it on our website. 
And here it is, the Patek Philippe 5320G. You never thought a Patek Philippe dress watch could look this good at night. Stunning day or night, you can see and you can purchase this one on our website.